Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson number 190, we'll take a look at logical versus physical architecture. Uh, you can get a listing of all of the lessons I do on Software Architecture Monday at my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. Now, in lesson 177, <clears throat> back on January 1st, uh, I talked about logical architecture components and what those components really mean and, and how they're represented in the code base. Well, in this lesson, I'm going to take kind of a step backward and really come to a higher level of understanding what the differences are between that logical architecture I talked about in Lesson 177 and a physical architecture. So what I'm going to use as an example to show you is an architecture kata called the SysOps Squad. Now, this is a trouble ticket system where customers who purchase electronics can also purchase a support plan. And if they have trouble with that electronic device or need help with installation, uh, they can enter a trouble ticket into the system. And the customer facing experts in this company, that would be the SysOps squad, uh, comes to their home or office to fix the problem. <clears throat> now I'm going to show you both the logical and physical architecture of this system. But let's take a look at the main processing fl flow first. So we have a customer who first registers with the site and also then enters and creates a customer profile. If they experience a problem, then they can go and create a ticket through the, web, uh, uh, through the website. Uh, the system then locates an expert in the field, uh, finds an expert, and assigns that expert. Uh, the system then uploads that ticket information to the expert's mobile device and at the same time notifies the customer that the expert's on their way. Now the expert goes to the home or office, fixes the problem, and then marks the ticket as complete. <clears throat> when that happens, uh, the system then sends a survey to the customer. And that's kind of the main processing flow of what happens in this SysOps squad ticketing system. Now, this is the physical architecture uh, of the SysOps squad. Um, notice we've got a lot of different things here. We've got some elastic load balancers that go off into some services. Uh, we've got an S3 bucket here with a lot of different databases and some logging. Uh, we're using Cassandra over here and SimpleDB. <clears throat> we've got some push expansion servers, uh, iOS servers for pushing, Android for pushing off to the expert's mobile device, and so forth. Well, you might ask, well, wait a minute. Uh, you just went through the main processing flow of all these things that need to happen in the system. And now you're showing me an architecture. But where is the customer profile logic here? How about ticket assignment? Or even where is survey located here? How does survey work? Um, where's the customer notified um, using this architecture? And <clears throat> what about the whole thing about ticket completion uh, when the expert finishes up the ticket on their mobile device? Well, this is what I mean by a logical architecture. What we're looking at here is a physical architecture, but in a lot of cases, we start to lose sight of actually how the system internally works. And that's what's called a logical architecture. And let me show you an example. So we saw a physical architecture. But now let me show you how the system really works. Because we have a customer, we also have a field expert. Well, customers need to register with the site, so I'll create a register logical or a customer registration uh, logical component. Now, remember back in lesson 177, and if you haven't seen that lesson, it uh, might be a good idea to either pause this video and watch it or watch it right after this video. Uh, but the point is we've got a logical component, a building block of the system for customer registration. It's something the system needs to do as well as profile. And I'm going to lump these two together into a customer domain. <clears throat> now, also, uh, and the customer, of course, interacts with these. Uh, but there's a lot of ticketing logic. We have to be able to create tickets, which the customer interacts with, and then assign those tickets. 
well, we need to write some code, and that code would sit within that logical component called ticket assignment. A ticket assignment ends up notifying the customer, so we'll create another logical component there, and also ticket routing, uh, which then routes the ticket to the field expert. Well, the field expert completes their work, so let's create a ticket completion for the field expert to basically uh, interact with that logical component. And we'll put all of these within, let's say, a ticketing domain. Uh, then we've got our survey. We need to send surveys, so we'll create a survey sender and a survey receiver, and we'll put those in the survey domain. And the customer, of course, interacts with those as well. Well, what I've just shown you is really the logical architecture of the SysOp squad. Uh, those building blocks of the system that contain source code of the interactions between the major things this system needs to do. And as a matter of fact, um, that logical architecture <clears throat> is pretty much kind of separated from the physical nature of this system. In other words, these are all the building blocks of that particular system. So the question is first, um, is this one large monolithic single deployment? Uh, if so, all of these components would be put together and all that corresponding source code into a single deployment. Uh, maybe each of these domains are themselves services, uh, such as with a service-based architecture. Uh, where the ticketing domain and all of those kind of components uh, sitting right here um, <clears throat> are all uh, within a single deployment unit, as is all the customer logic, as is the domain uh, for survey. Um, maybe perhaps all of these individual building blocks, these components, are in fact in their own separately deployed service, uh, very similar to what a microservices architecture would be. Um, but the point I'm making here with this is that when we create a logical architecture, it's typically separated from that physical architecture. In other words, the things we usually might ask a question about are, but yeah, but where's the database here? Um, how about the user interface or user interfaces? Um, what about all the protocols? Is some of it messaging? Some of it maybe streaming? What sort of protocols are used to communicate these? Uh, where are the services here? And what about gateways and APIs and stuff like that? Well, these, everyone, are all part of a physical architecture. The logical architecture is really void of all of these kind of artifacts and really shows the flows and how the system is actually put together. So we have our logical architecture <clears throat> showing all the building blocks of the system and how it's going to work and how the code is organized. Then we have our physical architecture. The actual physical artifacts like databases and API gateways and load balancers, uh, uh, user interfaces and services and stuff. And really what we're doing now is to be able to say, take that physical architecture, but also the logical architecture, for example, the survey portions, and be able to pinpoint, for example, on receiving a survey, exactly what services and artifacts are used in receiving a survey. And then, as we saw from Lesson 177, oh, we see how that is manifested in the source code. Uh, for not only that survey domain, but the sender and receive uh, being those leaf uh, directory structures. And this gives us now, uh, combined with Lesson 177, understanding those logical components, uh, really seeing that difference uh, between a physical architecture and the corresponding logical architectures. Now, typically, when we go about creating an architecture, uh, we start with that logical architecture itself. And as a matter of fact, in the next three lessons, I will show you three techniques to be able to create that logical architecture. So this has been lesson 190, the logical versus physical architecture, kind of understanding the purposes and also the differences between these two views of software architecture. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the next three episodes, um, I will talk about approaches 
uh, for creating that logical architecture and identifying architectural components. So thank you so much listening uh, for listening. Uh, stay tuned in two more Mondays for the follow-on episode of Logical versus Physical Architecture. <laughs>